Hi there, welcome once again to the Duke Scopy TV studio. I'm Ben Jones. Alongside me back in the studio is René Philippe, here to discuss banking licences. René? Hi Ben, it's nice to meet you again. Fantastic. Now, the idea of a banking licence is not necessarily something that would always appeal to everyone, maybe they're not necessarily interested in or can, can't necessarily afford. Would, would you agree with this? Actually, no, Ben. It's uh, something which is uh, very funny, but uh, when the first time I did a post on a banking license or purchasing a bank ICUs, I did, uh, it was in 2012, and I did a Google research of keyword. And actually, you had more than 250,000 inquiries a month about buying a bank, like 150,000 a month about uh, starting or purchasing a bank license. So it's definitely a subject which is of interest. Okay, but surely it maybe it's quite an expensive endeavour or at least a risky one. Actually, in terms of expenses, it's not as expensive as one would uh, believe. Uh, take, for example, the example of Thailand. Okay, uh, I run a law firm in Thailand for more than 10 years. I was there for more than 15 years. And uh, over uh, the years, I have maybe assisted more than 148 investors starting restaurants. Okay. Thailand has a reputation as a cheap investment country, but despite this, most foreign investors starting restaurants in Thailand were investing between $250,000 to $300,000. In some cases, I have seen investors investing $1 million US dollars. Now, if you set up, for example, a bank license in St. Lucia, Okay. For a Class B license, the minimum required capital is $250,000. For a Class A license, it's $1 million US dollars. So basically, in St. Lucia, if you calculate uh, paid up capital, government fees, uh, legal fees and other expenses, with $400,000, you can get started in the bank business. Okay. As to risk, there is a website which is called smartmoney.com. Uh, and they did actually a research on that subject. Basically, the rate of failure for a newly uh, incorporated bank within three years is one out of 10, uh, one out of 1,000, okay? For restaurant, is 60% rate of failure. And if you look at French restaurant in Thailand, the rate of failure is 90% over a year. So bank is not as expensive a business to get started in and it's not as risky as one would think. Okay, why would one want to get involved in the bank business? Actually, you have several reasons. Alors, firstly, you have people which are actually interested to run a bank and take deposit from the general public. Okay. But then, most investors in this sector, offshore bank license, are not actually interested to run bank. Uh, it's more of a group things. Basically, you, are, you, ha you own a group of uh, companies and you want to set up a bank to finance your own business. Just three months ago, Airbus Group purchased a bank in Germany. Why did they do so? Because it will grant them direct access to the European Central Bank uh, capital at very preference rate. And the second thing, a lot of airlines are currently struggling to uh, to organize the financing of the planes they are purchasing. So Airbus can, with this, finance their client purchase. And you have other European group who has uh, purchased bank or obtained bank license. You have Daimler, uh, Siemens, Peugeot. So it's something that is done a lot. Uh, what benefit will you have if you start your own small bank? Uh, first, you will have access to international uh, market for uh, capital rising. Secondly, you will be able to issue your own banking instruments such as securities, bonds and so on. You will be able to issue a letter of credit. You can grant a loan to your own business. You can grant mortgage, which is actually a way you can actually uh, take profit offshore and it's legal. Uh, if you are a little bit bent in spirit, you could actually have your own bank, save your own assets before your creditor do so. So, I mean, there are a lot of reasons one, one could apply for a bank license. And is it easy to obtain a bank license? Alors, as I have already said, it's not as expensive a business to start, but it's not as easy as one would think. It's doable. 
take for example the case of uh, Saint Lucia, uh, where we just uh, obtained a license uh, last week for a client. Uh, the first step will be uh, to apply uh, to the ministry for the permission to set up an international business company for, bis uh, for banking purpose. Then after you will have the license application when this uh, has been done. Now, the authorities in St. Lucia will review and vet the director and the promoters of the bank very carefully. You will first have to prove that you do not have criminal record, no previous bankruptcy, uh, that you have a good business ethic. You will of course have to provide uh, information and proof that you have previous experience in banking business. And uh, all the information you, you are providing will be reviewed very carefully by the authorities. Uh, you will also have to uh, provide a business plan over three years. And believe me, the authorities are working very in depth on the information. Uh, for the last bank license uh, we, we have uh, obtained in St. Lucia, uh, 24 hours before the committee was meeting uh, to approve the license, uh, we received a call from the authority which asked more information about our uh, business plan. So it's a very, uh, it's not too complicated, but it's a process which you really have to invest you in. Yeah. What type of uh, bank licenses are available? Alors you have two kinds of bank first. The uh, first distinction is between local and international bank. A local bank is a bank which is incorporated into a country uh, which actually um, uh, can do business with local customers. An international bank, it's a bank which is incorporated into a country which can only do business with non-local customers, that is to say foreigners. Then you have the distinction, another distinction, which is class A and class B. Class A license, it's a bank which has the possibility to do every uh, bank business, like retail, commercial. A class B license is what I was, uh, uh, it, it was the example I was giving you before, of a captive bank, uh, that is to say a bank which is working only for its own group and do not take deposit from general public. Okay, now say that one didn't want to go through the application process, can they still purchase a banking license? Alors, yes, but technically it's possible to do so. But the first things you have to consider is, I'm in this business since 20 years, I have seen one single bank license for sale. Okay, there may be other, but I'm not aware of. Uh, the second thing is I have seen more offshore banks for sale than bank license. Why so? Alors, the first thing is in some jurisdictions, the license can provide, even provide that the bank can be sold or transferred. But the thing is this, is you have to understand that if you sell a bank license, you cannot just purchase the, the bank license and go into business, you will be vetted as well. Your director will be vetted as well. Uh, take for example the example of Panama. Uh, if you review uh, uh, bank information, you will see this bank was established in 1990s. But you will see that the license was issued in 2005. Does it mean that the bank has been operated, operating 15 years without a bank license? No. It simply means that the bank was sold to a new owner in 2005 and a new license was done. Also, last thing, if for example you purchase the bank license and you not only change the shareholder, the director, you also change the name and the business objective. They will just ask you to do a new license. So there is no point to it. Okay, now what's the best current jurisdiction uh, to purchase an offshore bank license? Alors, in my opinion, currently it's St. Lucia. Alors, why St. Lucia? Because it's a clean jurisdiction, uh, it has a strong law, especially anti-money laundering uh, law, it's FACTA compatible, they have started to uh, do a lot of tax information exchange agreements, they have 20 which are uh, currently uh, applicable. Uh, you have good uh, professionals there, whether auditor, accountant, lawyers, and finally they have a very strong regulator. And I must say uh, by experience that the regulator in St. Lucia is working as well, as good as the Swiss FINMA. And it's not something uh, little to say. Okay, and finally, is obtaining the license the end of the process? No, actually it's not. Uh, obtaining a bank license, it's a little bit like getting married. 
it's a long-term commitment, okay? Uh, basically, you have to understand, once you have obtained your bank license, uh, you had given a business plan to the authority. You will have to follow your business plan. The authority will actually, in St. Lucia, they will review your account quarterly. They will review your audited account, and they might actually uh, go on site to make inspection. So it's an ongoing process. Uh, another thing is obtaining the bank license is not the end of it. Obtaining the bank license is not the end of it. Uh, you will have to obtain, obtain the SWIFT number. You will have to make arrangements to get correspondent bank. For example, in St. Lucia, they have cancelled a bank license because the bank owner was not able to obtain a correspondent bank account in a country from the UECD. Okay. And uh, St. Lucia is starting to get quite uh, popular now. In uh, 2013, they have done like uh, nine licenses for the whole years. This year, already 14 licenses have been uh, issued. And uh, just one last thing, to, to explain you the difference between obtaining the bank license and operating the bank license, uh, now you only have eight banks operating in uh, St. Lucia. You see, because there is a further step to be taken. Fantastic. René, once again, it's a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. Do make sure you keep clicking back to Dukascopy TV as we bring you plenty more updates and exclusive interviews. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.